is this. The first clean headshot you get, you take him. This man is unstable and very dangerous. We can't afford to take any chances. The first clean headshot you get, you take him. Here comes our boy. Here comes our boy. Okay, easy. Come on. Here he comes. Come on! What are you waiting for? Take him! He's there! Take him! Come on! What's the matter with you? Are you blind? Take him! Come on! I'll oh, show yourself! Damn it! Settle down, children. Settle down. Now, children, I must ask you all to prepare yourself for some rather distressing news. During the summer break, Mr. Folds from our music department was executed by a gang of Mexican bandits whilst on holiday in Paris. <laughs> also, Miss Parker Potter of the English department was found dead behind the wheel of a Range Rover with a poisoned dart in the back of her neck. It is believed she was assassinated by an Aborigine terrorist splinter group. You may also be shocked to hear that the entire modern language department, <laughs> Mrs. Grant and Shandu, and Mrs. Finch and Guggenheimer, were all killed when their tour bus went over a cliff in El Salvador. <laughs> it is reported that a tall, shadowy stranger in a top hat was seen tampering with the brakes. <laughs> it's also my duty to inform you that there will be a one minute silence at lunchtime today in memory of the catering staff, <laughs> all of whom were killed when a Scud missile attack was launched upon their barbecues in Mrs. Stewart's garden. <laughs> Sadly, Mr. Spindle, the school janitor, was also killed whilst attempting to leave the country. He was blown to pieces by a well-aimed shot from a rocket launcher wielded by a man in a jetpack at Freshwick Airport. <laughs> Other teachers who have been assassinated are <laughs> Shaw, Mrs. Lever, Mrs. Archibald, Mr. Kelly, Mr. Bridges, Mrs. Kinshaw, Mr. Gibbons, and Mr. Jose Hernandez Barbosa. <laughs> and now, if you don't like to turn to page 25 of your hymn books, all things bright and beautiful. <laughs> And, uh, well, this is the kitchen. Uh, as you can see, all new uh, worktops. Uh, and this is the washing machine. Uh, this is the cooker. Oh, and this is the fridge. Oh, well stocked. Very nice. And, uh, well, Inside this there, obviously is the sitting room. Very nice. Very nice. The beauty of this is that you can just add everything. I am spake by the way. Food processor? Why not? Use the food processor. <laughs> I've got a bin down here actually. These are not just going. Oh, he's before. only watching that. So he is. And oh. in, just blitz that up quite quickly. Just quickly. This would be your uh, your bedroom. Do I like a paint the way? <laughs> well, yeah, but uh, I think you'll find that the uh, bed's very comfortable. You know, obviously, obviously it's a bit small, but, you know. <laughs> I, mean, the, I mean, the last person, in fact, uh, who lived here, he found, he found it very comfortable indeed. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, do, you, do you want 
you want to take it? Oh. I'm going to have to think about it, mate. <laughs> right. <laughs> you can draw. Here we go. Prepare for blast off. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Jane, there's a tiny old man just came out your... Oh, she can't be hearing you now, my son. She's in a chance of our gas McBlarney. Only you can see me. But I thought leprechauns lived in caves and stuff. Oh, some of us do. But most of us prefer to stay inside a pretty girl's secret place. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of us about these days. But most people just don't bother looking for us. But... If you listen really closely, you can hear us a giggling and a farting in that. So, what do you want? Well, now, see, the thing is, you're a pretty big lad. The last time you purr went at it, your big fella broke seven of me ribs. <laughs> I want you to stop putting that big brute of yours into my wee house. I'm here to offer you a wish. A wish? What? Anything I want? Anything at all? Hmm. I wish for... I wish for five extra inches on my penis. Oh, like an elephant you'll be. But <laughs> if that's your wish... Magic! Now, get back up there, you wee pervert. I'm going to batter your face bones into a ball of you. Oh, no! Trick, trick again! Back to the earth! Run. Blast off! <laughs> I have to get a good ten here for a minute, so I'll speak to you on Wednesday. Yes. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Um, something very important I've got to tell you. Hmm? You're the first person I've ever told this to. And you must never tell another living soul. To that, absolutely. Of course not, honey. I have superhuman powers. <laughs> they manifest themselves in many ways. But the main thing I've noticed is... X-ray vision. <laughs> Look. If I put my finger here, I can see right through my nose. I can see the outline of my nose. I can also see my finger. I can see the nose. I can see the finger. I can see right through my nose. What am I going to do? Sally doesn't know. The kids don't know. What will I do with this power? Okay, um... I think I can actually see what's happening here. See, see, see what you're doing is, is you're looking at your finger with your other eye. So, although you think you're actually looking through your nose, you're actually not. No, you're wrong. Because if I close this eye... <laughs> So, um, how's the McGregor case coming along? Paul Spengler, the big German, if he holds on a few seconds longer, this will put him ahead of the current leader, Hans Wehling, to become officially the world's strongest man. And that is Hans, the big Dutchman, shoot the encouragement to his opponent. And that is typical of these two men, who have become firm friends during this competition. And he's done it! Absolutely incredible. Horst Spengler, what's the matter? Look at that. Look at the spirit of this man and the crowd love it. Horst Spengler, what a man and feeling, feeling, jumping for joy. This
This is extraordinary, extraordinary sportsmanship. Ah, oh, gentlemen. Championships in Holland next year. Oh, I've got some, but no, I'm not. I'm not some. I'm not. I'll admit. So, are you. What? Awesome. Is that a great athlete? Not bro. So, I was talking to Claire today at breakfast, mm. and she said her interview went so well, they offered her the job on the spot. Oh, that's brilliant. Where was it again? Cambridge. She has to move out at the end of the month. Oh, fantastic. I was thinking, mm. and I know we haven't discussed this before, but why don't you move in? Instead. Me? <laughs> oh, I'm not sure about that. Come on. It's a bit late to get all sex before marriage on me, isn't it? Eon. It's not that, it's just. Well, I don't know that we'd be doing it for, well, you know, the right reasons. But why? We get on great. It'd be lovely to spend more time together. <laughs> Look, I'll be honest with you. The only reason I'm going out with you is because it gives me the confidence to chase better looking girls. <laughs> now, if I was to bring one of them back to your tiny flat, where would you sleep? I'd advise you to start putting unmarked five pence pieces in these tubes. It's nice and sure we fingers can carry you. This is a robbery, Mother Humper. And I've got a wee, scary rubber skeleton in my coat. I don't believe you. It's a wee, scary rubber skeleton, Mother Humper. And it's terrifying. So put the pieces in the tubes, or I'll dangle it right in your face. What's the problem here? This is a robbery. Give me what I want, or I'll show you a wee rubber skeleton. <laughs> Let me warn you, it was the scariest one in the shop. It's got green eyes. as if you fancy your chances with a wee rubber skeleton. Imagine his wee rubber feet dangling in your forehead. Imagine his wee 
rubber hands running through your hair. This is the police. Drop the wee rubber skeleton and come out with your hands above your head. There is no escape. We have officers surrounding the building. If you do not comply within 20 seconds, we will not hesitate to take action. These men are armed and you have been warned. I've not seen you here for a good long while. Mum, me and Willie are just on our way out. My, you've really filled out, William. You must be what? <laughs> 16 now? Nearly 18, Mrs Collins. 18, eh? You'll be getting to that age then. All pumped full of hormones. Mum, we're just going out. First sight of the pair of bazonkas and there you are. Pitching a tent. Well, actually, I've got a girlfriend. Bet I drive you nuts, eh? Do you have dirty wee fancies about Johnny's mum, Willie? Bursting on me in the shower, all naked and wet and slippy, just gasping for some full on, big belly bumping. Um. Come on! It's every young man's fantasy, getting pumped by his best mate's mum, riding the baloney pony with an experienced older woman. Mum, please! And don't think I haven't noticed you trying to get a sneak peek at my bogons through this blouse. I've seen you, William. Can't keep your eyes off my legs, can you? Oh, God. Listen, Mum, we've got to go. On you go. I'd be far too much woman for you anyway. I'd swallow you whole. Bye, Miss Collins. Now, don't drink too much. I don't want William trying to sneak into my bedroom for a game of nighttime netball. <laughs> Boys, eh? One track minds. <laughs> So, are you going to... Tears, me. Oh. Thank you. Recently, the long-lost diaries of Captain Oates, heroic member of Scott of the Antarctic's fabled expedition of 1912, were rediscovered. And now, at long last, this moving story of tragedy and self-sacrifice can be told in his own words. 20th January. Bitterly cold, howling wind. Our leader, Captain Scott, is doing a splendid job of keeping the men's spirits up. With his good humour and jeopardy. This morning he produced gales of laughter with his amusing and accurate impersonation of my voice. He kept it up for many hours, repeating everything I said. And I know we all respect him the more for it. 21st January. Howling wind and bitter cold. Supplies are running low. My frostbite is causing me great discomfort. But I soon forget the pain when I see Scott's hilarious impression of my comical limp. What a great man he is. 23rd January. Cold howling. Wind bitter. My frostbite has worsened. Scott's suggestion that it would be helped by my sleeping outside the tent last night was, I feel, misjudged. But to hear Scott's stories about me from within, 
and the laughter they aroused. I know I was helping my teammates. I'm sure they all realized the stories weren't true, especially that one about me and the walrus. <laughs> 25th January. I have a bitter cold and howling wind. Scott kindly let me sleep in the tent last night. I emerged this morning to find the others had written, Oats is a wanker in the icebox. It is visible from space. 26th January. Woke to find a note from Scott. Why not go outside. Please take your time. Wonder what he means. Downstairs. I think we've got burglars. You better go and check. <laughs> but I think there's burglars downstairs. Go and check. I would go myself, but I better stay here and then if they attack you, I can phone police. You want me to go and check? Yeah. You want me to fight burglars? Yeah. Not to the death. You know, just take the guns off them, hold them down till police come. Mark, I'm eight months pregnant. Then you've got the right advantage. Come on, stop being such a shy bug. Mark, you're the one we can check. I can't go. I've got no pants on. Come on now, put some makeup on and go down and fight. What if I get hit in the stomach? They wouldn't hit a pregnant woman in the stomach. They'd batter right into your face. Those keep your head down. They, for God's sake, fix you there. Have we still got that baseball bat under the bed? Yeah, but I better keep hold of that. Just in case they come up here once they've wasted you. Oh, go. Cool. It's probably just the cat anyway. Aye, you just keep telling yourself that and you won't bottle it. <laughs> yeah, and send kiddies through any way down. I might need all the human shields I can get. So, the new abdominal cruncher has been very successful uh, so far. And we're hoping that our new uh, back strengthening device, the Elasto spine will continue this success in the home fitness area. And uh, there'll be a wide range of uh, mail order videos, which we're hoping will be presented by the one and only Lorraine Kelly. So that's in the pipeline, so keep your ear to the ground for that one. Uh, but moving on, uh, plastics. And I think you can see that if the company keeps going in this upward curve, uh, we're going to be a pretty formidable force in the next few years. And hopefully, uh, I think we're going to be a major force to be reckoned with. Uh, but moving on... Uh, uh, yes, Sandra? You're it. What, Sandra? You're it. What did you... I know. You haven't all. Bloody hell. I'm sick of this. I've had enough. Last week it was you and now you. I mean, come on. Now, seriously, you can piss off. You're all fired. Oh, come on, I don't want to see any of your faces in this building again. Come on, out. A lot of you. I'm serious. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm always it. <laughs> All right, but this is the last time, okay? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Coming ready or not? <laughs> Oh, you all know you've got to stay in the room. David needs to take some. David, David, you need to take some responsibility here. 
I, I don't see what the problem is. You're the director. Well, tell me the problem. We've been rehearsing for a week. We can't speak we, the words. But there's been no, there was nothing said last week. We've been rehearsing for a week. We've got three weeks left. We're not past line one, act one. David, please. I feel to say the Michael. problem is. Huh? Why don't you speak to Michael? Get Michael to Michael is an award-winning playwright. Well, sure. Michael is an award-winning playwright. Well, sure. award winning. Winning. well, get Michael to explain it, because you obviously can. All right, sure. Calm down. You I'm obviously going. don't. I'm going. Just what? calm down. Deep breaths. Oh, for goodness <laughs> sake. Right. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Jake. I mean, the man's... Calm down. Calm down. All right. God's sake, Michael, you've got to help me out here. Now, your last piece was a knockout, a joy. But this new manuscript, I mean, it isn't working. I mean, what the hell does Kaplok von Gespartuliti actually mean? Michael. Michael, please. Oh, good evening, sir. Can I be of assistance? Ah, uh, my dear. One is constantly searching for assistance. The thankfully yours comes from the wallet, not the heart. Uh, your name, sir? Cox. Quigley Cox. Quigley. Does that end in a Y? Every time, my dear. It begins with an eager when, but soon all that remains is a sorry why. Still, one must eat. So I require a table and something to fill a hole. Very well, sir. Uh, do you have a reservation? Never. Reservations have never ended, Mr. Cox. It's the headlining tragic flaw in the Vaudeville bill of my sight. Well, we don't seem to be too busy this evening, sir. If you'd just care to follow me. <clears throat> table for one, sir? How tiresome that such an assumption provokes neither outrage nor indignation in either. <laughs> Would sir prefer a window seat? Naturally. Vanity is a demon which plays a rumber on my spine. But one must advertise. If you're not in it, you can't win it. <laughs> no. Is Sir expecting someone? Only perpetually. <laughs> Would Sir care to see the menu? No need. I am aware of what I most desire. A rare rump and a banana split. <laughs> I'll swallow both, but stomach neither. It is always the way. I'll get the waiter to bring you the wine list, Sir. Thank you, darling. And if you rise and I am gone, fear not. As ever, I can be found in the nearest gutter. Staying here. I don't feel relaxed enough. 